And the allegations just keep on coming against alleged sex trafficker P. Diddy. Another artist has broken her silence, saying she escaped one of Diddy's freak-offs when she was just 16. She says Diddy lured underage girls to these parties using illegal drugs, drinks, food, and even candy. On top of this, she says P. Diddy himself angrily chased her down a hotel hallway after she tried to leave one of these freak-offs. This is just the latest in a long line of shocking allegations against the now disgraced music icon. I'm Sierra Gillespie, and this is Law & Crime News. 54-year-old Sean Diddy Combs faces a handful of federal charges stemming from allegations of racketeering and sex trafficking. But it's the number of allegations against Diddy that is still shocking, with more survivors seemingly coming forward by the day. It all started last November when Cassandra Ventura filed civil suit against Diddy in New York. She is known professionally as the singer Cassie, who began working with Diddy when she was just 19 years old. They had a relationship for multiple years, during which time Cassie alleges that Diddy emotionally, physically, and sexually assaulted her. Cassie's lawsuit specifically references sexual assault, alleging Diddy forced Cassie to have sex with prostitutes and even recorded this. Just one day after this lawsuit was filed, it was settled outside of court, but that didn't stop others from coming forward. A slew of civil suits against Diddy all allege an eerie pattern, that the singer would drug or force his victims to drink alcohol before sexually assaulting them. Sometimes he would force these victims to have sex with prostitutes, and on top of that, he even recorded this. These recordings are referenced in multiple civil suits against Diddy, including the one filed by Rodney Jones, known professionally as Lil Rod, who was working as Diddy's producer starting in 2022. Lil Rod alleges this same pattern, that Diddy sexually assaulted him and also forced him to have sex with a prostitute. Hey, if you're out and about listening to our videos, stop right here. I have something you don't want to miss. It's this new app called Upside that gets you cash back on daily essentials. It's something I use every time I pump gas because it's easy and it's free and you get cash back. Okay, all you have to do is download this Upside app. You just claim an offer for whatever you're buying and then you pay as usual and just follow the steps on the app to get paid. To find out how much you could earn, click the link in the description to download Upside or scan the QR code on the screen and use our promo code LCNEWS to get an extra 25 cents back on every gallon on your first tank of gas. But Lil Rod's lawsuit lists another important allegation, that there's apparently hundreds of hours worth of video and audio recordings showing Diddy and others participating in this illegal activity. And now, based on his indictment, we can confirm the feds have some of this electronic evidence and it's part of their case against Diddy. He was indicted by a grand jury on September 16th on charges of racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking by force, fraud, or coercion, and transportation to engage in prostitution. The indictment also brought up a term we'd originally heard in Lil Rod's lawsuit, freak-offs. According to the court docs, these freak-offs were elaborate and produced sex performances that Combs arranged, directed, masturbated during, and often electronically recorded. During these sessions, Diddy would force victims to use drugs, have sex with prostitutes, and be recorded while doing this, sometimes without their knowledge. So similar to what we've heard across multiple civil lawsuits, and now we're hearing the allegations from yet another accuser, the artist known as Good Friday. According to her social media, Good Friday is a writer, director, actor, and singer who, by the way, has more than 11,000 Instagram followers. She initially broke her silence to The Sun, describing a harrowing incident from when she was only 16. This incident allegedly happened in 1999 in Toronto. That July, she and a friend went to an autograph signing promotion as part of the launch of Diddy's second album, Forever. When she met Diddy, Good Friday says she and her friends sang for him, and after that, he invited her to his party. She said, quote, After we sang, he made his move. He was hitting on me, commenting on my beautiful eyes and complexion. He whispered to his security guard and then invited my friend and I back to his hotel, where he stated he was having a big party and other artists would be there. I told him we were only 16. He said, oh, it's okay. I don't check IDs at my parties. Diddy apparently threw a party at a five-star hotel where he enticed young and underage women to come with the promise of drugs, drinks, and even candy. At the party, Diddy's security guards told guests they weren't allowed to use their phones. Good Friday says, quote, the no phone situation was another red flag for me and I began getting anxious. 
After that, Good Friday was allegedly taken to the first party that was in a loud and dimly lit room. There, people were allegedly openly having sex, as others offered these underage girls alcohol, drugs, and even record deals. She says she noticed right away there were more men than women at this party. Good Friday said, quote, I lost my friend but found Puffy. I asked him about her, if he knew where she went, and he told me I need to ditch her. Instead, she tried to look for her friend and came upon a locked door. She said, quote, I tried to open it and a security guard immediately came in to ask what I was doing and informs me that I wasn't allowed to go in that room until I was invited by Puffy to the other party. That's what the security called freak offs, the other party. When Good Friday tried to leave, she alleges Diddy's security team manhandled her, refusing to let her go. She told the son, quote, I almost had a panic attack when I saw Diddy coming from the freak off room. Obviously, his security told him and I ran to press the elevator button, hoping it would come so I wouldn't have to run down 20 plus flights of emergency exit stairs. He was kind of running toward me. This look on his face really terrified me. It's hard to explain, but I'm sure many others can explain that look of like I was in trouble for leaving. It was just horrible. I was just praying that the elevator would come and I didn't have to talk to him. After that, she allegedly yelled out, saying she was only 16 and that it was past her curfew. She pulled out her phone and said her dad was calling. After that, she apparently ran into the elevator and was escorted down to the lobby with hotel security. Good Friday says she didn't tell anyone this story for years, saying, quote, I feel so much sympathy for the victims and guilt for not coming out with my experience sooner. She also says she is, quote, so proud of everyone who has come forward, especially Cassie, the courage it took her to be so vulnerable. After this news broke, we reached out to Good Friday for an interview, but have not yet heard back. But there's more news on the Diddy front too, as new reports allege Diddy's freak offs also included other high profile celebrities. This is according to Ariel Mitchell Kidd, an attorney for a woman who's filing suit against Diddy for an allegation dating back to 2018. This attorney says her client was sexually assaulted by Diddy with an object before he forced another man to sexually assault her, and after that she escaped. So far, the survivor's name isn't out there. Her attorney says they plan to file suit later this week. But meanwhile, she has gone public about some of these freak off recordings that allegedly show a star even more high profile than Diddy participating. She won't say who was on the video, but says it's no question that the person is in this pornographic video and apparently they're very visible. But if that really is the case, why hasn't that person already faced charges? What about the other accusers who are coming forward after this federal indictment? That's where we're turning to criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor, Matthew Mangina. This is a complex case with a lot of different avenues, but let's start with the accusers that are coming forward because even since his indictment a couple of weeks ago, we've heard from several additional accusers who are now coming forward with their story. So why do you think that is that they're breaking their silence now? Well, there could be a couple of different reasons. Obviously, they may feel a little more relaxed. Uh, other people have come forward. Uh, you know, it's it's difficult when one person comes forward and you're going against somebody with deep pockets and, and they can really uh, come after you. But when you see, you know, more and more people have experienced the same trauma that you have, uh, you're, you're a little more comfortable coming forward and, and, and talking about your victimization. One of the allegations we're talking about today is this music artist, also a writer, a singer. Her name is Good Friday, that she goes by her stage name. And her allegations date back to the late 90s. Obviously, now we're in 2024, quite a ways away from that. But do you think they could have any weight as far as the indictment against Diddy? Could prosecutors be speaking with her? Well, I certainly think that prosecutors will reach out to her and want to know um, her story and, and, and the uh, trauma that she endured as a result of all this. And, and they'll also be looking to see, uh, you know, if it's consistent with what they already know, uh, you know, from other victims that resulted in, in the criminal uh, indictment. So I think that uh, it's important uh, that these additional victims come forward. It's, it's important uh, because they can corroborate what uh, they already know in terms of these prosecutions. And, you know, you know, some of these people, you know, may be, you know, outside of the jurisdiction. Uh, there may be issues with statute of limitations in some instances. So, so those things will all have to be 
uh, worked out, but, but there certainly are more people coming forward who are uh, alleging that they've been victimized by um, Combs. So these people are probably going to talk to investigators, potentially prosecutors, and obviously this is far down the line, if and when this does come time for trial. Do you think any of these new accusers could testify? Well, it's certainly possible uh, if there are trials, whether those trials would, would be civil trials in which they're pursuing uh, you know, monetary claims against Combs for his conduct, or criminal trials in which uh, they would be called to testify as, as witnesses to criminal uh, conduct by Combs. So, you know, really, we're, we're still at the early stages of this. You know, the indictment has just come down. Combs is sitting uh, in jail. Uh, so I would assume the defense is going to want to try to move this case along as well, uh, because uh, without Combs having... Um, the ability to, to leave pending trial, uh, he's not going to want to sit there for uh, two years while uh, this case uh, sort of meanders its way through the criminal justice system. Honestly, it's kind of overwhelming with the amount of cu accusers that there are out there, it's upwards of 100 civil suits against P. Diddy. So that's dozens and dozens of these accusers. I mean, would prosecutors call all of these people if and when it came time for trial, or would they kind of narrow it down to more specific instances? Well, you know, I think that all of these uh, accusers will be interviewed by uh, investigators uh, as this case proceeds, as, as this process sort of reveals itself. And, and you know, I think in each instance, uh, you know, whether it's the FBI or Homeland Security in terms of the criminal aspect of this case, you know, they're going to, to vet these witnesses. They're going to to want to know uh, exactly, you know, what they have to say about the conduct of Combs, whether they were personally affected by it or they observed it uh, in, in some way. So, you know, I think as more and more people come out, and as I understand, there's going to be a press conference soon from a a law firm in Houston that says they have a hundred more victims uh, that they represent. Uh, you know, so this is going to be an expansive investigation, uh, which is not uh, going to go as quickly as I'm sure uh, Combs wants it to. You just mentioned more than a hundred plaintiffs who are now coming forward with civil suits. So that's more than a hundred of these accusers. And obviously the investigators and prosecutors are going to do their due diligence, as you've said, speak with everyone, corroborate information, et cetera. So does that push things even farther down the line? Diddy and his team have indicated that they do want to go to trial, but could that be quite a ways away from now? Well, it, it depends. I mean, um, there are rules with regard to speedy trial uh, in, in the federal system. You know, a, a defendant is entitled uh, to a, a speedy trial uh, pursuant to the United States Constitution. So, you know, that's a factor that's going to be weighed here. You know, and sometimes, you know, prosecutors want to be, you know, very careful about how they, you know, pursue this case. Because, you know, at least in my experience, you know, having been a prosecutor, sometimes, you know, less is better um, because if you have a long history, uh, a long line of witnesses that are going to come forward and those witnesses aren't always consistent and their stories are not always consistent, you know, sometimes that can create, you know, what defense attorneys want is this sort of gray murky kind of area, uh, which we which we call reasonable doubt. So, so when, you know, you, you better be careful if you're going to use a lot of witnesses and you have a lot of victims, that those victims are consistent in the way they're portraying what happened and that they don't create that idea that, hey, you know, something doesn't smell right here. And that's always a problem for jurors. So we talked about these overwhelming amount of accusers that are coming forward. So potential more witnesses for the prosecution, we'll see. But what about potential additional defendants? I mean, right now, Diddy is the only one who's listed in the indictment. But there are rumors that other people were involved, obviously his associates. And now speaking about those rumors, there is this allegation that another high profile celebrity can be seen on a recording being involved in these freak offs. So do you think there could be more charges coming? 
Well, you know, we don't know the whole story yet. Um, and, you know, there may be additional defendants. Um, you know, obviously, there were a lot of people involved in this, you know, freak off. So, so, so there were people uh, who, who were there because they were being paid to be there. There were people who were there because they were forced to be there. But I also assume there were people there who wanted to be there. Uh, and who may be also involve themselves in criminal activity as these parties, you know, unwound. So, I, you know, I think really at this point, you know, there's a potential for additional charges because if these were so pervasive and there were so many people there, it appears that there may be other people involved in criminal activity. If there is possibility for future charges for these other people because as you said i mean a lot of these people according to the indictment knew what was going on was illegal i mean they were very clearly aware at least his associates and probably some of these participants in the freak offs so we have all of that but why do you think prosecutors wouldn't have already filed charges well i mean they they may be uh you know in the midst of uh you know further investigation and sometimes as you investigate things as you interview people you unearth other crimes and other potential defendants. Um, you know, so I, I think we shouldn't always think that if one person's arrested, that's the end of the story. And I think particularly because of the circumstances here, there were a lot of people and there were a lot of these so-called freak off parties. It, it, this wasn't a, a one off and done. This, this was something over a, a period of years that occurred in at least, you know, some manner or another. So, so as you begin to hear from more witnesses, as you begin to hear from more victims, you may learn about other people who are involved in criminal activity. So it's not unusual to have a single individual charged and then an investigation grow from there. Switching over to Diddy right now, who is obviously behind bars in Brooklyn, I wanted to talk to you specifically about this because you wrote an article about it and there was a lot of interesting stuff in there. Specifically, everybody's talking about how Diddy was denied bail. Obviously, he wants to get out and then the federal judge says, no, you're going to stay behind bars. And you made an interesting point regarding the federal statutes there that because Diddy has so much means, he has money, availability to travel, that could be why he was denied bail. What do you think? Well, yeah, that, that's, I think that's certainly a factor here. And, and, and it's ironic because the federal system is different than the state system. In the state system, in most instances, uh, the court will set a monetary bond, which means if you pay X amount of dollars or you pay a bail bonds person, you know, a fraction of those, that amount, you can be released pending trial. And a lot of people complain about that process because it's based on wealth. If you have money, you can get out of jail. If you don't have money, you stay in jail until your trial begins. The federal system was different and they tried to create a system that wasn't based on wealth. It was based on factors like, are you uh, a threat to flee? Are you dangerous? And um, if, in fact, you, you were not, you would be released without having to pay any money pending trial. OK. In, in Combs' situation, it seems like he's being penalized for having money because he has a great deal of resources at his disposal, because he has a lot of contacts uh, throughout the country and internationally. He's a threat to flee because of his wealth. So it's, it's kind of turned the, the process on its head. Uh, but, you know, it, it, under the federal rules, as the judge has ruled, um, Combs is a threat to flee. Talking about those resources, honestly, it almost seems unlimited with Diddy. His bank account has to be huge. And as you said, he has contacts here in the States, all over the world. So he's got a lot of resources. And one of his main ones is his defense attorney, Mark Agnifilo, who has petitioned the court that Diddy be released on bail. Hasn't happened yet. But do you think it's possible in the future that he could be released? I, I would think that it's possible, uh, especially if there's a long delay for whatever reason, um, maybe because of, of additional victims, additional witnesses, 
uh, you know, delay that's not the responsibility of Combs or his counsel. But I would think that that release would be very restrictive, some sort of, you know, house arrest, you know, with the real time monitoring so that, that he can't, you know, walk out without somebody uh, observing him, you know, and, and, and the courts can put those types of restrictions uh, on a person. You know, another thing that impacts um, release at times is the ability to aid in your own defense. Um, you know, because you're in, in jail, you can't meet with your counsel on a regular basis. There's a lot of things that you would, that your counsel would want to do on an ongoing basis, but can't because, you know, you're uh, incarcerated. So, so there's factors involved, but um, I would only think that those factors w would come about if there was an extended delay in his case going to trial. This question is about the conditions of the jail, MDC, that Diddy is in right now. There have been a lot of articles about this, first of all, because he's used to these mansions, lavish homes, and all of a sudden he's behind bars, which unto itself is shocking. But also, this is one of the most dangerous and unkempt places in the country. I mean, his attorneys are pointing out that there have been murders, suicides, corrupt COs there. So... I know that they want him to move. They want him to go to a different jail in New Jersey. Do you think that that is actually possible that he could move if he isn't released on bail? Yeah, I would think it's much more likely that he could be moved to a different facility as opposed to, to being released. And listen, you know, unfortunately, you know, some prisons are better than others and, and you can't pick and choose uh, where you go uh, pending trial. Uh, I'm sure he's in a segregated area where he's not being exposed to, you know, random other inmates. So, uh, you know, the last thing that they want would be for Combs to be harmed in some way because everybody is scrutinizing this case so much. And it would be an embarrassment to the corrections uh, department, the Bureau of Prisons or, or, or wherever uh, he's being kept. So so I think, you know, they're going to really do their utmost to keep him safe and protect him. But, um, you know, you, you, you get what you get when you get arrested and you don't get bond. A statement from his legal team reads, quote, Sean Diddy Combs is a music icon, self-made entrepreneur, loving family man, and proven philanthropist who has spent the last 30 years building an empire, adoring his children, and working to uplift the black community. He is an imperfect person, but is not criminal. To his credit, Mr. Combs has been nothing but cooperative with this investigation, and he voluntarily relocated to New York last week in anticipation of these charges. Please reserve your judgment until you have all the facts. These are the acts of an innocent man with nothing to hide, and he looks forward to clearing his name in court. Diddy has denied all the allegations against him and has pleaded not guilty. He's due back in court on October 9th. For Long Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.